Hello, my name is Jay Crow, Creative Director at Bohemia Interactive Nishak Studio, and today we're going to get hands on with Armour 3 E3 2012 presentation. So, uh, we've only got a few minutes today, so I'll take a quick th look through uh, what we've prepared for this year, uh, what we've changed since last year, and the plans for the coming months. So, uh, since you guys are familiar with Armour, I'll skip the, the usual introductory details and skip straight to the good stuff. Let's head down to our firing drill and I'll talk a little bit about the content of our presentation this year. We're a little bit more hands-on than last year. Uh, there's a good reason for that. Partly the motivation is that this kind of content that we're seeing here is what we'd like to provide for the community alpha later in the year. To talk a little bit about that, we, we preferred to have it in July time, but due to some changes, some upgrades from Physics 2 to Physics 3, we decided to push this back and we'd have much more information around about Gamescom time. The goal is to make Armour 3 the most stable game, the most stable release that we've had, and hopefully with the community's help, we'll be able to achieve that. What we see now is a firing drill. This is a great little activity just for validating animations, for testing weapons, making sure the sounds all work nicely. It's a nice little challenge too. Okay, so let's jump into the presentation proper now and see some of our standout new features. Okay, we'll kick things off hopefully uh, with a little view of uh, Stratus Island. Uh, this is one of our two islands. Uh, it's a little smaller, although when I say that, it's still 8 by 8 kilometers. Obviously, the other island is Limnos, which we saw a little bit more of last year. 300 square kilometers of ground terrain, and obviously the coastline to boot. See, we're firing up our uh, little bird here, and we're just going to take it up in the air, get a sense of what the island looks like, and hopefully not get killed. Let's do this. So again, the lighting, the volumetric clouds, it's looking a lot better. Uh, obviously, take on helicopters last year helped us add a lot of these nice new features and we're happy with the progress we're making so far. We can maybe switch to some of our rockets. Get a sense of a little more powerful sounds than maybe we've had in the past. I will try not to get sniped here by this. So Stratus is going to be a big part of the start of our campaign. The campaign is going to be divided into three parts. And stage one, uh, based on Stratus, it's a little smaller. You know, you can get used to uh, how to handle the rifles, how to navigate around the terrain, and before we dump you on the limbs in stage two or three. Okay, let's quickly switch out to some vehicles, and uh, hopefully we can get an idea of uh, what other improvements we've made. The kind of vehicles we can show here are the submersibles, and obviously we can talk about our new underwater environment. Uh, a lot of work goes into this. Uh, all, almost all the development team managed to have some input in here in one way or another. We've got the environment artist making a completely new, different kind of terrain, which gives people you know, a bit more tactical freedom. We can go in the air to our objective, or we can go around underwater as well. Animations work obviously is important for us to get the scuba divers looking good. We see a little bit of the uh, render the texture displays here as we pop into the submarine itself. Classic fish. Okay. Now, hopefully, I'm not going to crash into this rock barrier here. But we can talk about um, the kind of gameplay challenges that this offers us. Here we're using a submarine to get around a little bit and we'll pop out and take down a couple of our divers. I think it's worth mentioning that we can't take any old weapon underwater. Uh, the rifle that we use is specifically designed uh, with specific am uh, ammunition as well. If I jump out, I'll try not to die. So real! These weapons only have a range of about 30 to 50 meters, but it, it gives us some gameplay under the water, which is uh, obviously important to us. The sounds as well have been a big part of this development, uh, with dynamic filtering of the, 
of the weapons and things like helicopters above us. Oh, goodness. And the kind of gameplay that we can imagine here, particularly, is disarming the mines, making way for maybe a beachhead invasion or something like that. Okay, let's jump out of this one right now. Uh, let's take a look at a different aspect of armor the vehicles, uh, the new physics supported driving model, and maybe throw some grenades down range as well, to try and show off some ragdoll. So as we saw in the preview video, we've got the mirrors working nicely, the, in the onboard display too. As I was alluding to before, the we're upgrading from physics two to three. Now, that's been delaying the Community Alpha just a little bit uh, because we really want to roll out this, which is an important new feature, and also uh, the multiplayer aspect as well, just to be configured properly uh, to make our testing worthwhile. We'll have more information about that after E3, when we can, uh, things have calmed down, down a little bit, and we can be very clear about what we intend to offer and how you can access it. So if I make my way around the bend here, hopefully we'll find some uh, targets to engage. It's convenient. Switch into uh, thermal optics. Thermal optics are added with Operation Arrowhead, but we hope maybe some people that missed that will be able to enjoy the uh, quite advanced rendering that we have here, uh, taken from our military simulation PBS. Although I should add, improved by our programmers, although I see the kill. So we get a nice feeling of the new sounds, uh, a, few, a few nice details like the exhaust heat there the volumetric clouds. Really, Armour 3 is about making the most polished, stable version of the game we've been able to make. And we do that with the support of the biggest development team that we've ever had working on the projects. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to Camp Maxwell now and try to wrap things up a little bit. Oh my God, I was so unlucky I could hit. But the part was really Cool. So, taking one final tour back around. We'll be able to go and see maybe some of the different weapons. Again, once more our romantic sunset in the distance. Again, we talk about armor in terms of its freedom, lots of different weapons, vehicles, helicopters, scuba divers. Uh, but this time there's a real focus on the quality of the, of the objects. Each weapon is has a lot of work involved with its sounds, animations, configuration. Perhaps it's worth just quickly showing the different kind of things we can do with that. We can take off our sight if we want. Uh, if we had a laser up, laser or flashlight, we can attach it here as well. Down here we've got uh, our capacity, and this relates to fatigue. The more we're in, we encumber ourselves with gear and equipment, the more fatigue we have, and the less accurate we'll be able to be when we're running around, the less distance we'll be able to run too. That's something of a whirlwind tour of our, uh, of our game at the moment. We'll have a lot more information about this after E3 as well. Uh, keep an eye on our website, armor3.com, and of course, our regular social channels, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Okay, thank you very much, guys.